young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his saints. For the people of Israel who are near to him, praise the Lord. Amen. 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 The sermon says, as we enter into these gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise, we want to be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Oh, gracious Father, we come again this day to say thank you. Thank you, dear Lord, for just letting us be here. Yeah. But we realized that so many laid down last night. Well, well, what day did you get up and say good morning today? Yeah. But thank you, Heavenly Father, that you guided us to this service. Yeah. We just bless your name. Yeah. Father, for we realize all the troubles in this world. Yeah. Well, but we know, dear Lord, that you can handle it. Yeah. 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 And God, as we, as we lift our heads up unto the Lord uh -huh. and call upon his name, yeah. he will heal this land. Oh, God, we ask that you heal this land. We just bless your name, Father. Oh, yeah. Lord, we ask that you bless these who have attended this service, that they will be blessed. Bless the Lord that when the hearers of your word hear your word, sinners might be saved, backsiders might be reclaimed, and, and Christians might be strengthened. So, Father, we just come to bless your holy name. We ask the Lord that you continue to bless it. Lord, that you bless our pastor. As we stand to preach your uncompromising word, that something might be said, that we too might be here, hearers of your word, and that we might be made for the better of it. So, Father, we come into this place to say thank you. Thank you, dear Lord, for what Christ has done for us on the cross. We thank you, dear Lord, for his birth, his death, and his resurrection. Most of all, we thank you for his that's why we're able to stand right now yeah, yeah. and praise your holy name. Yeah. That's why we're able to stand right now and give you all the glory and yeah. all the praise. We ask you that you bless this church. In Jesus' name we pray and ask you all. Amen. Amen.
9, verses 13 to 18. For you formed me, for you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me. When as yet there was none of them, how precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I would count them, they are more than the sand. I awake, I am still with you. Father Almighty, we come before you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for bringing us together. We thank you for this congregation. We thank you for all our visitors, our many, many visitors today, as many as we haven't seen in a long, long time. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for Sister Davis, for all the years that you've been with them and all the years that you will be with them. We thank you for the guidance that they provide for us, for their strength, for their courage, and for their vision. Through them, you have made this congregation possible, and this congregation continues to grow because of you and because they listen to you. We thank you, and we ask you to bless the service in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. delicadas partes internas de mi cuerpo y me entretejiste en el vientre de mi madre. Gracias por hacerme tan maravillosamente complejo. Tu fino trabajo es maravilloso, lo sé muy bien. Tú me observabas mientras iba cobrando forma y en secreto. Mis entrañas se entretejían, mis partes en la oscuridad de la matriz. Me viste antes de que naciera. Cada día de mi vida estaba registrado en tu libro. Cada momento fue diseñado antes de que un solo día pasara. Qué preciosos son tus pensamientos acerca de mí, oh Dios. Ni siquiera puedo contarlos. Suman más que los granos de arena. Y cuando despierto, todavía estás conmigo. Padre Santo, Dios Todopoderoso, te agradecemos, Señor, tus bondades. Te agradecemos, Señor, porque puedes estar aquí con nosotros y podemos acercarnos hasta tu trono de gracia para darte gracias Señor por todo lo que recibimos de tu mano Padre y también para darte gracias principalmente por la vida de los pastores de Iris, del pastor y de la hermana de Iris. te agradecemos por su vida Padre y te pedimos Señor que la sigas guiando en tus caminos para que ellos asumen su bien a nosotros también, te pedimos bendición para toda la congregación y para todos los que están aquí presentes y te agradecemos por todas tus
Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. During the month of November, we celebrate Pastor Davis, who is our shepherd, and Sister Davis, the woman who completes him. Pastor Davis instills wisdom into us and leads us in the path of the Lord. He helps us discover our talents, whether they be music, robotics, or media. Sister Davis helps us amplify our talents by teaching us God's word and music lessons. She always reminds us that our talents are gifts from God. Dear Ms. Davis and Pastor Davis, thank you for giving everything you've given us, and thank you for giving us piano lessons and Bible study. I hope this note gives you courage and determination for this year. Thank you for sharing the word of God with us, and we hope you have a great anniversary. And we hope you continue to teach us about God and His Son, Jesus. I am so thankful for the both of you because you take your time to care for me, us, and try to teach us to become a better person. Thank you, Uncle Matthew, for serving the church and teaching me the uh, word of God. Thank you, Aunt Kellen, for taking your time and caring for us and letting us, me play the saxophone at the Church of God. May God bless you for many more years. Happy anniversary. Thank you, Pastor Davis, for teaching me the word of God. And thank you, Ms. Davis, for teaching me music and happy anniversary. Thank you, Ms. Davis and Pastor Davis, for teaching us the Word of God. We appreciate what y'all have done for us, and may God give y'all more blessings to come. Amen. Amen. Dear Ms. Davis and Pastor Davis, thank you for everything. Thank you for teaching us more about God the right way. If it weren't for you two, we would, we would have been lost knowing little about God. Thank you. Amen. Dear Ms. Davis and Pastor Davis, Thank you for teaching us about the piano and the Bible. We hope that God will bless you and your family for the rest of your lives. Happy anniversary. Ms. Davis, you've been teaching me music for over 10 years. And Pastor Davis, you've been teaching me about God. I very much appreciate all that you two have done, and you've been huge role models in my life. Thank you. Amen. Today we celebrate Pastor and Sister Davis who have dedicated their lives to the Lord. They understand that we, the children, are the future. They, they support both of us and our family so that we can do great things while bringing people to Christ. Thank you, Pastor and Sister Davis.
Good afternoon, everyone. We're really here to celebrate the 18th appreciation for Pastor and Sister Davis. And we have a tribute from the choir. With appreciation for our pastor and wife, thank you for 18 years. You have servants taught a warm love for the Lord, a set of authentic examples, though you walk with faith. Thank you for the wonderful impact you are making in our church, for all the ways the Lord will continue to use you. 2 Corinthians 3 and 3 says, You show that you are a letter for Christ, written not with hand, but with the spirit of the living God. Well done. Been able to 
follow instructions very well. <laughs> and, it's all right. So people, people, when they see me coming, they know that I'm not going to follow instructions very well. I, I was in the military, and uh, generally in the military, one learns to be disciplined. And of course, when I was in, I was disciplined. But as soon as I got out, they, I went back to my old way and my old habits. So I do not follow instructions well. But I tell you what, I want to get you guys to uh, follow me as I disobey today. Amen. <laughs> Y'all know y'all like to disobey every now and then. It's just fun sometimes to disobey. Amen. So what we're going to do, um, the program says that I am to introduce uh, Pastor Dr. Rose, who is our speaker today. Let's give him a hand. Let's give that red jacket a hand. said if we had known he was going to wear his, we would have put eyes on him. Um, what I want to do, what I want to do so we can uh, lift some burdens and all of that kind of thing and, and just enjoy the remainder of this service as we worship God in spirit and in truth. Uh, I want to go ahead and receive the offering. I said I want to go ahead and receive the offering. So we're going to ask that uh, uh, the uh, ushers will prepare to uh, minister uh, the envelopes. Uh, they're coming now, and uh, uh, you can uh, uh, prepare your checks, uh, get them ready. Um, you may get your phones out and. Uh, Pastor, Z uh, Pastor Davis's uh, gifts can be given on Zayo uh, using his own number. Is that correct, Pastor? Amen. And uh, that's good money in the bank. I tell you, uh, on, this, on the eighth day, God created Zayo to catch it. And I said, that was good. Amen. And so, uh, so we'll uh, we're going to uh, uh, prepare uh, to uh, uh, minister uh, and to worship with our gifts. Amen. 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 They're coming. Uh, they're coming. Uh, there are some up, up front here that still need envelopes. I think. Uh, okay. So they're. they're yeah. Oh, okay, we got them on with you. Good, 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 good. Anybody need two? Just raise up two fingers and we'll bring you two. You fill up both of them.
so disobedient. Amen. <laughs> and being willing to follow somebody that cannot uh, follow instructions. But thank you for being so kind and so generous. You know, uh, Pastor Davis, amen, um, he's just blessed all the way around. He's got a wonderful church family, wonderful church congregations, good folk, amen. Then got one of the sweetest wives on this side of heaven. Amen. And uh, listen, he's deserving. He's a hardworking man. And I like to just encourage him. That, you know, uh, I get tired just watching him work. Amen. But uh, uh, Pastor, just keep on doing what you're doing. Amen. Because uh, the world is in need of uh, people who are generous with their ministry and, uh, and so on. And so um, keep doing what you're doing. Sister Davis, um, those wonderful gifts that God has given you, you don't know how blessed you are to be able to share those with the body of Christ. And uh, listen, we just pray that God will give you strength and a long life so that you can bless young people such as those that you presented here today. Um, one of the things about it, amen. When, when you see young people doing great things, you know, that is a great thing to think itself. Because uh, there's so many that have uh, lost their way. And uh, when someone is there and willing to point them back and to interest them in wholesome activities, that is just such a blessing. So I just wanted to take this time. Uh, to salute you, and to salute both of you for the great and work that you are doing. Let's give them a big hand. You know.
allow us to good news of Jesus Christ. But before you come, since I've been given another task, and that is to bring up one of the best choirs right. on this side of heaven. And that's the Holy Trinity Choir. As they come and sing praises to our Christ, set the pace as the man of God come and declare the good news. Would you come, Holy Trinity, at this time?
today. And so I'm grateful and glad for their faithfulness. I want to thank them publicly for having come to celebrate his pastor and his wife, his church, as his church has called time out to honor his pastor. Thank the Lord for for them. Now, Pastor Davis, Dr. Davis, is one unusual person. Right. Pastor Booker said, right. and I'll paraphrase, he's like the energizing buddy. He, right. just, he just keeps on going. Yeah. Yeah. And as he does so, he encourages me, Pastor Booker, Pastor Daniels, and others yeah. uh, to just keep on going. going. Yeah. I thank the Lord for him, for the fact that he is such a great encouragement to me and to us. And so on this, is that the 16th? On this 18th celebration, we're delighted for the privilege to come, to share with and to honor him today. Let's give him a big hand again. I'm proud to say, and I'm proud that he allows me to be called his pastor. Um, you know, it's good to have good people with you. And I can tell you, he is one of the very, very best. He does uh, what many people never think about doing for his pastor. And of course, I have taken note. I know the Lord has taken note. And I want him to know what a joy he is to me and to this church family at Holy Trinity. Give him another hand. I love that lady who makes him look good today. Uh, sitting immediately to his right. What a joy it is to um, to to know her, to um, have her as a very special friend to me, to us. But what a joy it is to know that Matt's in good hands. Because uh, I know she takes care Amen. of Dr. Matt Alexander Davis. Amen. He and they are our riding partners. As a matter of fact, they stretch me out on riding the bike. <laughs> and uh, what a joy it is to ride with them. And when this service is over, um, Sister Davis has a secret that she's going to share with me. And uh, not today. Not to be <laughs> so. But uh, that's an ongoing thing that we have for many years. I, I just, I love good people. And I'm so grateful and glad the Lord has blessed us that the rules of our lives have crossed. So I want them to, to them to know how pleased and grateful we are. Holy Trinity has come. Uh, but uh, first of all, I want my wife to stay. So I saw you at your wife, that's what he has his yeah. well, I got one too. Thank you. Yeah. I'm over 51 years next month. Uh, so, don't, don't listen to these rackets. That's a book I talked about, and he said, I'm there. Third month, you try to get on the off. <laughs> As he, in his own words, still to introduct me. <laughs> but what a joy it is to have Pastor Booker as my friend, my best friend, as a matter of fact, yeah. um, in, the, in the ministry who, who's always an encouragement. I said to him yesterday while we were talking, sometimes when we're talking, when we get past our foolishness, he has a way of being so enriching. And I would, I would tell anybody, you get a chance, talk to Dr. Richard Booker. He's a blessing to the body of Christ. Amen. I'm a living witness. He's a blessing to me. Thank you, Dr. Booker. Amen. I do want to put one thing you said. Dr. Booker said when he was in the military, he was an army officer. He said he was disciplined. <laughs> When his enlistment came up, he walked up to re-enlist, he said, no way. <laughs> and they sent him home, but I'm glad they did, because they sent him home to us. Give him a hand. 
Now, you've already met the choir. They have ministered to us in song. They have some sanctuary servants on the floor. We don't call them ushers. We call them sanctuary servants because of what they do. They serve in the sanctuary. And so let's give them a hand for that. All of those things that you have, so a lot of babies can know that you have come to work with you on the music. Thank you, Holy Trinity, for being here. We are here to, today. Our deacons are here, and uh, we're certainly grateful to the Lord for that. Ben, you heard Ben, uh, uh, master of the piano. Mm -hmm. I call him old nine fingers because he's a, he's a masterful fellow at that piano. Mm -hmm. So let's thank the Lord for being here. And of course, Ms. Marie, Ms. Marie and, uh, and our percussionist, it's just good to be in the house today. I'm not going to sing now because the hour is growing. There are a few people here that know the growing. But I do want to share uh, a word. I do want to talk to us just a little bit uh, today. Now, when I'm preaching, I like to get happy and holler, but if I don't do that today, I'm happy anyway. I just got hollering. Uh, but I want to, I want to call your attention to Second Kings four. All right. Second Kings four. And I want to begin reading at verse eight of Second Kings four. Second. Kings chapter 4, verse 8 and following, you'll find these words. One day, Elisha went on to Shunem, where a wealthy woman lived, who urged him to eat some food. So whenever he passed that way, he would turn in there to eat food. She said to her husband, Behold now, I know that this is a holy man of God who is continually passing our way. Let us make a small room on the roof with walls and put there for him a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp so that whenever he comes to us, he can go in there. One day he came there and he turned into the chamber and rested there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, call the Shudamite. When he had called her, she stood before him. And he said to him, say now to her, see, you have taken all this trouble for us. What is to be done for you? Would you have a word spoken on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, what then is to be done for her? Gehazi answered, well, she has no son. And her husband is old. He said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the doorway. And he said, at this season, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, No, my Lord, O oh man of God, do not lie to your servant. But the woman conceived. She bore a son about that time, the following spring, as Elisha had said to her. Thank you so much. I want to talk about blessed by the word of the man of God. All right, all right, all right. All right. Blessed by the word of the man, man of God. Of God. Right. It is no secret, as I said to our church this morning, we're living in a difficult time. Well. Much is going on. The uh, media waves are filled every day with bad news. If you listen to the news on yesterday, 
many people were shot in a Chicago in a prison. Yeah. Yeah. If you listen to the news uh, not many days ago, some people were shot here in Houston in a public complex. If you saw this morning's newspaper, the front page um, pictures many young men whose lives have been snuffed out at an early age. We are, we're living in a difficult time. Amen. May I just say to you today that um, it is time to hear what God has to say to the preacher. All right. All right. Sad All right. thing is, right. so many people who make their way to the clubs and other places, so many people, they have an eye for the music yeah. to which they dance, but they don't have an ear for the word of God. Be endeavoring to march to the drumbeat of the world rather than that of marching to the drumbeat of the word of God. Well, but I have some good news for you. Even though they are meandering around with closed ears, the Lord is still speaking. And I'm glad about that. I, I'm glad that God is still speaking, even though there are those who don't care to hear what the preacher says. I want you to know that God is still speaking. And it's time that you and I, it's time for us to turn our attention to uh, incline our ears to hear what is it that God would say to us. When one hears the voice of God, well, when one hears the word of God, and when one acts on that word, that one is surely to be blessed. My Lord, my Lord. Let me just tell you, as you read this story today, a few nuggets, I'll lift them and then, and then I'll be on my way. When you began to read this story, you see that there is a wealthy woman. Mm -hmm. That means she has some money. Right. The Bible says she's wealthy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that means that she could pay her bills. Well, well. The Bible says she's wealthy. Mm -hmm. that, that means, of course, that um, she didn't have to worry about this, that, and the other because she was wealthy. And you know, the Bible does say money after all things. Right, yeah, right. He who has no money can't answer. But the one who has money is able to pay his bills. Oh, yeah. Is able to put food on the table. And so I encourage young men uh, to don't just look for a job, but plan for a career. Oh, yeah. right. so, so you can have the kind of income so that you're able to take care of your family. You know, families break up because people are broke. And folk get tired of being broke. But but this woman is wealthy. Her husband has well provided for her. And, and what is interesting to me that this story starts in verse 8 with a wealthy woman, but in the seven verses prior, there's a poor woman. Are you walking with me now? And in the story of the poor woman, her husband has died. And, and the creditors want to take her children. But when she cries to the man of God, he tells her what to do. And when you read the story by the time you get to verse 7, you will discover that she's blessed by the word that she heard from the man of God. There is something about the preacher who stands to declare to the hearing of people what thus says the Lord. Well, well, I mean no harm, but I mean to say it just like I'm saying it. Deliver me from the preacher who's always preaching health, wealth, and prosperity. And the only one prospered is himself. Are you walking with me? 
you, when you read the Bible, you, you you don't get the kind of prosperity that people are preaching. Prosperity in the Old Testament meant a right relationship and a close walk with the Lord. Yeah. One prospers who walks with God. Yeah. And, and so Joshua 1 8 teaches us that then. Then thou shalt make thy way prosper. You will have a walking, lasting, blessed relationship with the Lord. All right, all right. Give me the preacher who preaches biblical truth. And that's what we discover here in verses 1 through 7. The man of God tells the woman what to do because he's heard from the Lord. Oh, yeah. All right. And when she does what he says to do, the bottom line is she's blessed. My Lord. My Lord. But then leaving the poor woman, we're introduced to a wealthy woman. Oh, yeah. I think that's so interesting that we move from one sort to another. This wealthy woman sees the preacher. He comes by that way all the time. And every time he comes that way, she takes notice of him. And so she says to her husband, let's add on to the house. Let's, let's, let's build a room for the preacher. And then she says, let's dress it up. Yeah. He needs a bed. Uh -huh. He needs a table. Yes, he needs a lamp. Yeah. Let's furnish the room yeah. for the preacher. Now, that's um, that's a little difficult for some people today. Because some what? people tell you, what? I ain't giving the preacher nothing. What? 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 That was a brother in our church. He from Mississippi. <laughs> Years ago. He just didn't like preachers. I said, why is it? And you don't like preachers. And he told me, he said, well, when I was a boy, preachers come to the house every Sunday and eat the chicken. And we would be hungry, but we couldn't eat. Till the preacher. And so this young boy grew up. The finest meat he had was chicken feet. Some of you have eaten chicken feet. So I said to him, but I'm not that preacher. He said, that's all right, you're still a preacher. And there are people even today who don't like preachers. And, and the reason they don't like preachers um, if they just stop to think about who the preacher is, what does the preacher do? Yes, who does the preacher represent? Yes, sir. Perhaps then they'll have a change of heart. This woman went to her husband. Yes, sir. And she said to him, honey, mm. let's add a room for the preacher. Now I can hear some brothers today saying, you must let your mind. I can tell you where you're at. There are some people, there are some people today who don't want to do anything for the preacher. There are folk who never participate in a love offering. There are people who don't believe in supporting at the anniversary. Because they don't believe in giving to the preacher. Help her, help her. But this woman, this woman said to her husband, yes, sir. let's add on to the house. Hmm. To add on to a house is costly. Oh, yeah. But her husband said, okay. And the story said they built the room. Yeah. So that the man of God, when he passed that way, will be able to turn in to rest. As the story goes on, one day when Elisha and Gehazi, his servant, had come and they went in the room, Elisha got to thinking about it. all that this woman had done for him. And he said to Gehazi, call her. And when Gehazi called her, she came and stood before Gehazi and he asked her, 
What is it that we can do for you? You have been so kind, you've had on to your house, you furnished the room, you've made it comfortable for whenever we pass by. Um, what is it that we can do for you? Shall we talk to the king for you? Shall we talk to the commander of the army? The woman said, no, all is well. I dwell among my people. I'm just doing what I do because I love the man of God. All right, all when I put a pin there, I discovered something. When people really love the preacher, oh, yeah. all right. they'll try to help the preacher. Yeah. Yes, when people really love the preacher, they don't get upset because the preacher wears a new pair of socks. No, no, no. <laughs> when people really love the preacher, yeah. they ought to want their preacher to do well yeah. because he wants them to do well. Yeah. Yeah. And so she said to Gay Hayes, I really don't need anything. Gay Hayes, I went. And reported to Elisha and said, well, the woman said, everything is all right. Mm -hmm. And the prophet said, there must be something that we can do for her. It's amazing how preachers are always trying to think of ways to be a blessing to the people. All right, all right. Gehazi, Gehazi said, well, there's one thing. She does not have a son. Mm -hmm. All right. Brothers and sisters, in those days, a woman who had a male child were considered um, highly. Oh, yeah. That's right. But a woman who was barren sometimes not thought of very well. Mm -hmm. She was wealthy. Mm -hmm. She had a husband, but she didn't have a, a boy child. Lord help, Lord help. And the prophet said, call her in here. Call in here. And she came and stood. And he said to her, by this time next year, Lord, yes, sir. you're going yes. to have a baby boy. Yes, well, well. By this time. Yes, sir. Next year. Yes, sir. Now maybe uh -huh. you're going to have yes. not a child. You're going to have a boy child. In that society, to have your firstborn be a boy child uh, was an esteeming happening. Yeah, yeah. By this time next year, you're going to have a boy child. Now listen, Gehazi had told the prophet her husband is old. Why would they put that in the story? Uh, <laughs> that he's old. Uh, why, why did they have to write that line? Uh, uh, it, it's, you ready? Uh, the text says, the Hazar said the prophet, her husband is old. Uh, and that means that is in there because what God was going to do was beyond the ability of her husband. You know, God is able to do them. She, she's an older woman. But God is able to work beyond, it wasn't right, it said exceedingly above all that you could ask of him. No child, no more child. But the promise is, in spite of the fact uh -huh. that your husband is old. Uh -huh. There is a thing of getting past childbearing right. me. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm wrong to tell you, the Lord is able. Yeah. I don't know anybody who's able to turn back the clock like the Lord. By this time next year, you're going to have not just a child, but you're going to have that enriching experience of giving birth to a boy child. And then the writer hurries along, fast forward, and says, and she conceived. Did y'all get that? Her husband is old. But the text says, 
She couldn't see. God gave him some get up and go. And the text says, she couldn't see. The text said, by next year, and the text said, she could see, he was old, but this time old didn't matter. I tell you, God is able. Don't know who you are, what you're going through. But your word from the preacher, who listens to the voice of God, you will be blessed. Now, let's not hold you too long. Notice the end of these immediate verses. The Bible says, by the spring of the next year, just as, just as Elisha had said, that woman had a bouncing baby boy yeah. sitting on her lap. God can take you from where you are to where you dream to be. The preacher said, by this time, there is something about who the preacher speaks. When he's declaring the word of God, it will always come to pass. As a matter of fact, one of the ways to know the true prophet from the false prophets, whether or not their prophetic sayings would come to pass. Yeah, yeah. Elijah said, by this time, <laughs> next year, and by that time, the next year, she had a bouncing baby boy on her lap. God have mercy. This woman had done a marvelous thing. By showing she cared for the preacher. Oh, yeah. And now God blesses her through the preacher. Mm -hmm. And she has a baby boy. An interesting thing happened one day when the lad was young. The lad was growing up. The lad was going out to the field. His father and the workers were when he had a sickness. And he said, my father, oh. Father, I got these headaches. I'm suffering migraine. I have these headaches. My head, my head. And the daddy did like most men today. Told the workers, take him to his mama. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we do, though. We yeah. tell him. We say, go see your mama. Go. That mama has some kind of special gift for caring for the children. But tragically, when they took the boy to his mom. The Bible says he sat on my lap and then he died. What an awful experience to have a boy that God promised to have him to die on your lap. She ran to the prophet, fell at his feet, grabbed him by his feet. And here's what the prophet said when he his eyes. Uh, didn't understand. The prophet told Gehazi, I leave her alone. She's troubled. Yeah. Something's going on. The Lord had not told me yet. Mm -hmm. May I just tell you, brothers and sisters, she ran to the prophet. Well. And she said, why, why, why did you give me a son? Mm -hmm. And the son would die. And the prophet gets up and he goes to where the boy is and after he was there for a little while, the boy was alive again. Sometimes in life, that for which we long, sometimes in life, that for which we desire and, and, and work hard for, sometimes it looks like it's going to ruin. But may I just tell you, if you just trust in the Lord, God is able to turn it around. Just a whole year. Too long I told you. She was blessed when the prophet told her you're going to have a son. She was blessed when the prophet went and raised 
her dead son. Yeah. But then I kept on reading the writing and I got over to chapter 8. Mm -hmm. And you can read it when you go home. The prophet calls the woman to whom he had prophesied would have a son. Yeah. And the Bible says that he warned her Go get your house and move immediately. Get this, because the Lord said yes, a famine is coming. Yes, May I just tell you, brothers and sisters, there are just too many people who are suffering today because they won't listen to the preacher. There are too many Christians who are suffering today because they choose to go their own way. There are too many Christians suffering today because they choose to make their own decision. Right. But when the woman heard the prophet yeah, yeah. tell her, get your family and get on out of here. Yeah. Because the Lord said a famine is going to come. Yeah. She took the prophet at his word and gathered her family. And they moved to Egypt until the famine was over. Mm -hmm. And when the famine was over... She and her family moved back to their home only to discover that all of the possessions had been taken by the king. Oh, no. But uh, I learned a tremendous lesson in the story. Mm -hmm. Tells me that uh, one day Gehazi was talking to the king. All right. And was telling the king about all the great things that the Lord had done through the preacher. Yeah. And told him about a woman that uh, would have had a son, and the son died, but the preacher had raised him to life again. Yeah. And while he had the king's attention, guess who shows up? Yonder comes the woman. And he says, this is the woman that the Lord's been dealing with. This is the woman who had the promised son who died, but who now lives. And the king began to ask the woman, is it so? And she told him the whole story. Yeah. Yeah. And guess what, my brothers and sisters, all of the property of hers that the king had taken. Yeah. The king restored everything back to her. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you, if you hold on just a little while longer, if you hold on to the word of God, Hold on to what God says to the preacher. You will discover that God is able to take you from where you are to where you want to be. What a mighty God we serve. May I just tell you, my brothers and my sisters, in the new beginning church, Some people 
of what Jesus said. Let them hear the preacher. Jesus said, let them hear the preacher. One more time. Jesus said, The preacher. God is not turn over, back to this and all that. God is doing according to his plan. He's given a scripture to declare to our hearing the will and word of God. Let me invite you today, if you have not done so. Give your life to Jesus Christ. He is a preacher. And the promise is, thou shalt be saved.
that own bodies, they do have medicine explained. They do have reminded us that the preacher is your servant called by you, commissioned by you. We thank you for the preacher in this house who comes to this place to stand, to preach, to declare to the hearing of your people that which is your word. Continue to bless him with virtue. Enable him, strengthen him, empower him, feel him. Use him to your glory. And let it be that he will see many come to faith. Let it be that he will experience that of many names being added to the Lamb's book of life. Let it be that he will see faith increase as people said under the word of God. Fill the house. Fill the house with those who are hungry and thirsty for your word. Fill your house with She said, Dick, you say something for a minute, I can say something. <laughs> I've had a few words, right? <laughs> I, I am, oh man. Man, a few words, but I can say something. Let's say something. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Matthew Alexander, I called him Matthew Alexander. When, when he calls me, I said, Matthew Alexander Davis. Uh -huh. And what a joy it is to know the phone ring. And his voice is heard uh, on the other line. And uh, I think he knows. See, I told you I'd say something. <laughs> this is Miss Cora. Did I say something wrong enough? Yeah, you said something wrong. Thank you. right <laughs> now. <laughs> Good afternoon again. Uh, we like to say we appreciate you, Pastor. And we have uh, some presentation from the youth. From the youth. From the youth. From my youth. <laughs> They're coming. Okay. Pastor David, Sister David, you would like to stand and receive your presentation. Okay, well, I, I take the step first. Sister Davis, bless you for the little things you do in thoughtful ways. Bless you for the very bright up, the brights of many days. Bless you for giving your heart as kind as can be. Bless you in a thousand ways. Sister Davis, do you know that God knows that you are a raw jewel? Deuteronomy 14 and 2. The ladies, 
and the earned ministry of the New Beginning Church honor you today to show our appreciation for all your hard work and dedication. Even though First Lady is your title, you love Sister Carol or Sister Davis. We want you to know that you are a blessing. And may God continue to keep you standing in the gap for our beloved pastor because behind every good pastor is a first lady. of the year. This is someone 
that's done some amazing things in the community. And it's from the Turning Hearts Evangelistic Ministry. And this year, we have selected Miss Chris Noble. Please come.
say that the road is blessing young women who cannot afford mammograms. And so each year we do a, a fundraiser on behalf of the Rose, been doing it since 2013. And uh, this year we wanted to honor Chris because she's the blackest white woman I ever seen. <laughs> white woman with white hair with black children. And she, she's, a, she's an advocate for black women because black women suffer more in death from breast cancer than any other particular race. So she has taken that mantle and run with it, and she's still running with it. Amen. And usually, um, uh, during the month of October, we give $350 to cover two women for a mammogram, but in the last two years, we've been doing the walk, the ride, and also the run on behalf of the roads. Last year, instead of presenting $350, we were able to present $5,000 to the roads. <laughs> and on, on this week, um, our church, with our church check that's coming out, that will be given to her today. Uh, Pastor Rose was a part of our ride this year, and uh, we are happy to present to you in the sum of $2,100. Who couldn't get one, she will know she has a fighting chance against cancer, or that she's cancer free. Both of them are blessings.
not avoiding me <laughs> and allowing me to be here. And I also want to just thank um, all of the children that come on Sundays and listen to me and do what I say do. You're going to be blessed for that, so just keep on doing it. And I keep telling the boys and girls, always do what your parents and your teachers say. Always be obedient. Be what you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be, and just be obedient. God is going to bless you. Uh, I also want to thank uh, my husband. You know, I know I don't say it too often to him, but I do appreciate uh, Pastor Davis. Uh, we were in Memphis um, about two weeks ago, and, and he and his uh, the class was doing an immersion from Bakke Graduate University, and uh, Pastor Davis had to speak. And I was not with them. I was with my mom, you know, doing things. And so when I did meet them, uh, they told me that pa how great Pastor Davis was. Right. And that he was such a wonderful, a wonderful man of God and how helpful he was. And he was such a servant. He was always there uh, hooking up the stuff before time and everything. And so they made me feel so, so good because I know I have a hard-working husband. Amen. New Beginning knows we got a hard-working pastor. Right. And we just really, really appreciate, you know, God being in his life because in his life, because when I prayed for a husband, I prayed that God would send me somebody that feared him. Right. If the person feared God, then I know they're gonna treat me just yeah. right. Yeah. So I don't I don't apologize. Baby, doing what he, he does for me, opening my doors of the car and, and pumping my gas. And doing, I mean, you know, I, you know what I tell him? That's just your reasonable service. <laughs> blessed me, and, and God has tremendously blessed this church. Oh, yeah. God has taken us places that no other person and no other church has gone. God has done some things with us that we know that we couldn't do on our own. All right. God has blessed us in this horse pasture that's now a soul mine. Right. And I thank God for it. Thank you, New Beginning, for hanging in there in the tough times. When people pulled 3,000 feet of copper out the ground and shut us down for six weeks, you were still there. And you were a blessing. You kept giving. You kept supporting. Wherever I went, you went. I'm so glad you're not letting me take a walk. And I just want to say thank you. I know people don't have to be kind to you, but I want to thank the New Beginning Church for being kind yeah. to me. Amen. And because of you, we are where we are, because God is ready to take us on. So let me say to the New Beginning Church, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To the youth and the young people, I want the youth to stand so everybody can give them a rousing hand of applause. Hallelujah for I thank God for these young people. Any church that has no young people is a dying church. 
And, and I often tell them that they're not here because of my great preaching. They're here for Sister Davis and for music. <laughs> and and I, I'm so glad I don't have low self-esteem <laughs> because they, they make sure I understand. Even in their speeches, they say, Sister Davis, then they, they tag my name. <laughs> and, and I'm all right with it. And as long as we can get youth and young people focused on what God is doing, I really, really appreciate it. And if you notice, many of their hair lay down for mine squat down. God has blessed us to be a bilingual church. And uh, I'm glad about it. I'm so glad that God has blessed us. We, we have a Latino service on Zoom. We have now a Latino Sunday school class. And we have a bilingual church service every single Sunday. Aureli, will you say it? Aureli? Aureli? Aureli is our second interpreter, so she's the interpreter on second or fourth Sundays, whenever it's, it's best for her. Thank you, Aureli, and thank you for coming out there. You can probably hear him every now and then when, when we begin our bilingual service. I asked him, can he emphasize like I emphasize? So he got a little soul in him now. <laughs> He has a good soul. He's a soul brother. So every now and then you may hear him hoop every now and then. And I'm going to tell you, it's quite a joy to hear a brother hoop in Spanish. I, I appreciate, I appreciate them. And I want to thank Turning Hearts Ministries that we began as evangelism and discipleship ministry. And Turning Hearts has survived. And the award that we give away every year is the Charles E. Clark Award. Charles E. Clark was one of our facilitators that went home to be with the Lord in 2001. And for every year, we have been honoring his name. And he was a member of Pastor Richard Booker's church. And if you didn't want it to be learned, don't say it in the presence of Charles E. Clark. He was a man of God, a preacher, and he has set a standard that we're still trying to reach. So we want to thank God for him. And so this year, Sister Chris Noble, we recognize you because you are you have been a champion. Thank you, man. So thank you so much. I'm, I'm, I'm really so, I want to begin to call all my friends and business names. So if you're visiting or you're a friend, stand up right quick. Let me see you. Because if I call your name, I'm going to miss somebody. Thank you so much for being here. Hallelujah. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for your support over, over the years. Thank you so much. We have representatives from, from Holman Street here where I slept my very first sermon. And they, they kept, they kept uh, supporting me. Thank you, Holy Trinity. Thank you, Pastor Rhodes. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a member of the Holy Family Church. It's in the tough times that you really need family. Oh, yeah. and, and Holy Trinity has been there for us. When times were tough and when things didn't look like they were going to shake out too well. When Carolyn came in 2019, I think Pastor Booker, Sister Booker, and Pastor Rose, maybe Sister Rose, knew that Carolyn had been, been diagnosed with cancer. And we had to press through that service. And we, we were able to press through it because of the support of the brothers and support of the churches. And here we are today. We've gone through breast cancer. We've gone through chemo. When I say we, we gone. We, <laughs> we've gone through chemo. We've gone through radiation. We've gone through surgery. We've gone through the pill. And then, right as we were about to come out of breast cancer, COVID-19 showed up. And so God, God has kept us. He has blessed us. And he's still keeping us. The pastor said, hold on. He says, hold on, because God is working behind the scenes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure that he encouraged somebody here today to let you know 
that God is doing something behind the scene. You yeah. just keep pressing forward. Yeah. Keep believing in him. Keep serving him. Keep being developed through him. So I, I want to say thank you. We got the pastor of the Gethsemane here. Thank you for being here, Pastor Daniels. Thank you so much for being for being present for being present with us today. All the ministers and brothers and sisters in this room, thank you. My brother law is here, brother Aaron Williams is here. I want to thank you. I did say I didn't want to call a name, but I want to ask the, the brother on the second row with the yellow mask on the second. Is always a person that look around. <laughs> this is Brother Bob Funberger. He's a member of the New Beginning Church. He, he was all the way here this, this evening. I said, man, come on so you can add some color to the crowd. Bob Farnberger is the one that, that support our church and in a very silent way. He and I worked on railroad cars and chemical plants some 30 years ago. And he was there to support our church. And I just want to say publicly thank you. We're praying for his wife that's, that's that we are we're, we're lifting her before the Lord. And, and I think they've been married 65, uh -huh. 66. Give us an anniversary card. 65. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. 66. So I owe you one more dollar? Yeah, it's been six or seven years. She put up with you six or seven years. Bob, Bob and I worked in a chemical plant together many years ago, 30 years ago. And, and that's when I was young and spry, and he was still kicking me, kicking me around. So thank you. And Brother Fuller Carr is here. Brother Fuller Carr uh, was one of my supervisors, and we kind of co-worked. Raise your hand, Brother Carr. He's here. And then uh, my co-author is here. Our book is coming out in February. We'll ask uh, Dr. Marcia Lee to raise her hand. And we're here. And now I start calling names. Let me just thank y'all. <laughs> let me, let me thank, thank all of you all for, for, just, for just being here. God has and God will bless us as we keep our hands in his hands. And God has blessed our church that I know for 18 years. And he's still blessing us. Amen. And he's still keeping us. So let us remember to pray for um, Denise Severan, yeah. a member of the Holy Trinity Church. Yeah. Uh, uh, we want to lift her in prayer, and I'm sure Pastor Rose will before, before yeah. we leave here today. We're also lifting up Pastor Hicks, Pastor James C. Hicks, as we go down from this place, Pastor Rose. I want to thank my wife. Did I not? Did I not say that? No, no, no. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> I want to thank my wife for being such a great support for Man. for always uh, pushing and, and looking to resource for Christ. Um, I think Pastor Rose is pretty partial, Sister Rose. He's he's pretty partial. One day we were riding in the car. And it must have been, this is a secret conversation, but I'm going to tell everybody. We were riding in the car, and I was driving. And it must have been in the month of June. And so we were talking about Carolyn's birthday coming up. And he had the audacity, the nerve, the gall to look at me and say, Carolyn, older than you? <laughs> said, Carolyn, older than you? I'm like, man, can't you see what you were saying? Can you be heard in the house? Can you turn 
like something else we heard in the house. He has to come up. He can come up. Come on, Pastor. All right. He speaks in. You speak Spanish. Six o'clock on my face, my sister. That's okay. He speaks. He interprets in Spanish. I want you to interpret in English. <laughs> Hermano, brother, Dios lo bendiga. God bless you. Usted tiene que aprender uh, español. You must learn Spanish. Porque usted tiene que uh, predicar la palabra de Dios. Uh, because you um, need to preach the word of God in Spanish. Porque hay mucha gente que uh, no conoce a él. El Señor. Uh, because there's a lot of people that uh, don't know about the Lord. Okay, gracias. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. 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 She more is real on that and who got a cool. Uh he's pretending to speak Hebrew. No, <laughs> The Romans the Rome 6.4, and that translates in English as? Uh, yeah, he is Lord, our God is one. Uh -huh. Dios es uno. Sí. Nuestro Dios es uno solo. Sí. God is one. All right. Let's give him a hand. For the record, I do not understand Hebrew. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Trinity. Man, you're already out there. You're best in the West. They're the best in the West. That's why I don't go to the East. Thank all of you for um, being here today in support of somebody very dear to me. Again, Dr. Booker, Dr. Daniels, and, and all who have come. So we're ready. Okay. You stand with us, praise God from whom all blessings flow in so much here now.
Thank you. 